the SIG P320. Let's talk about it. Welcome. If you're a fan of the channel and like what you see, please consider subscribing, smash that like button, follow me on Instagram, helps out the channel. Let's get into it. If you haven't looked into the design or modifications for the P320, you won't know that this design varies from the designs of most polyframe pistols over the past few decades. The word that SIG capitalizes on here is modularity. Typically, the frame is the firearm and the control components to drop into and mount to the frame. So you have to buy a pistol and modify it from there and that can get quite expensive. The P320 and all its different versions start from the fire control group. You can then pick your length and style of frame, your controls, your slide, magazines, barrel, all that good stuff. The sky's the limit. You aren't limited to the stock configurations that they offer and you can build your own however simple or Gucci that you want to go with. The intent with this build was to put together a compact compensated package that I could get to work reliably and it had to look amazing. I'm a big fan of the Glock 45 and I wanted a similarly sized grip module and slide and here it is. The fire control group. That's what that is. SIG's fire control group is the firearm and that's where you start. I wanted to carry this thing so I was fine with a stock unmodified offering from SIG and Stockpile Defense gave me a good deal on this so thanks guys. If you're ever in Boise, Idaho, go check them out. Show them some love as they've shown me. I also had some gold or tin controls that I wanted to put on this thing from Tyrant CNC. Thank you Tyrant CNC. Moving on to the trigger pull. The trigger pull Take up is relatively short before a decent defined wall. Then you hit some creep before the break. The break on SIG's polymer frame pistols are a little bit different with, I don't know, kind of a rubbery, spongy feel instead of a hard, crisp break. But I don't mind it at all. It's not a bad thing. It's just a little bit different. But overall, for a stock trigger offering, it's a pretty decent trigger. Like I said, I really like the size of the Glock 45 frame. So after some research, I went with this one. This is the X-Carry frame module. I like the look of the laser engraved LXG in black. So that's what I went with. I usually get my pistols stippled, but the texture on this is great. It's not quite as high quality as a high quality stipple job, but for $99, you really can't complain. It gives a custom and aftermarket look. Feels great, it's cheap. It's excellent, but there's a lot to choose from. The slide wasn't quite as straightforward. There are so many aftermarket slide options available nowadays, almost as many as there are for a Glock, and that's awesome. I went with the Zev Z320 X Compact Octane. The two main factors that made me want a Zev are firstly, they use a DLC coating on their slides, which is super hard and I love it. It's very durable. 
The second was their aesthetics. They have super slick, very nice aesthetics without looking too gaudy, I would say. I chose them because of their tolerances, their consistency. Zev does a very good job in their manufacturing process, but so do a lot of other manufacturers these days. Nevertheless, it is a great slide and I love it. Side note, their customer service is top notch. My hope for the barrel and the comp was to have a flush fit compensator. And I thought that this slide length would get me there. It did not. I did, however, know that I wanted this compensator. This is the Parker Mountain Machine Micro JTTC comp. So I bought a slide that I thought would match that. It didn't. Anyway, I'm still happy with the look. It shoots fantastic, very flat, but I'm a little OCD. I really wanted that flush look. So if any of you guys know what I did wrong and which slide and compensator combination would give me that look, let me know for a future build. I haven't looked into it, but I'm curious. Knowledge is power. As far as the comp itself, like I said, the Parker Mountain JTTC comp is super flat. It's also super small and super loud. I've tried 115 grain, 124 grain, and 143 grain, and it keeps getting better and better and better. There are two downfalls to running compensators, noise and reliability. As far as the noise goes, I mean, people complain about it. I don't know, we're shooting guns, just chill out. It's not even as loud as a stock birdcage on an AR, I don't think. Not a big deal, wear ear pro. As far as reliability goes, in most cases, if you throw a comp on a stock pistol or a pistol with stock internals, namely a recoil spring, you might and probably will have some issues. These configurations need to be tuned and do that at very least by shooting a particular ammunition and using a different weight of recoil spring. Round here, 115 grain ball ammunition is plentiful and cheap, and that's what I shoot. So my goal for this was to get 115 grain ammunition running reliably, and if I can shoot heavier ammunition, fantastic. This guy did the trick. This is a DPM systems recoil reduction system. It's got a few weights of springs. I don't know exactly what they are, but I went with the lightest, and after 100 rounds or so, of break-in, this thing runs 100% now. Before I replaced the spring, I was getting malfunctions at least every mag, but it was usually around every five rounds or so with 115 grain. So thank you, DPM. This thing works great. The accessories. Let's talk about the accessories, the things that make this mine. Tyrant Designs reached out to me to see if I wanted to review some of their controls and I said yes! They have great aesthetic, they fit really well, they sent me a magazine release, a mag well, and a back plate. The fit and finish are fantastic and the aesthetic fits really well with this build, so go check them out. The magazine well they sent works really well, but compared to something like this magazine well from Zev on my Glock 45, it's considerably wider. This works really, really well for carrying. I don't know if I would carry it with this on here, but it does work well if I would ever compete with this thing. So keep your purpose in mind. Another modification I made to this is the gas pedal mod. That's the gas pedal mod. It replaces your stock takedown lever and gives a very large shelf for your thumb to sit on. You can get the same or a similar type of gas pedal mod done in your frame where they cut out material for your thumb to sit on. And that's okay. This is considerably better. It's considerably larger with a larger surface area. So if you have problems with recoil control or your thumbs floating up, I highly recommend it. Another consideration for an accessory is holster compatibility. Of course, there are a ton of holsters on the market for the P320, but not to work with this gas pedal mod. As you can see, that might be an issue. I bought two holsters, one from Four Brothers for outside the waistband that facilitates this mod, and one from Allegiant Holsters. This thing's pretty sick. It's got, it's got topo on it. 
Ah, I love it. And it also facilitates the gas pedal mod. <clears throat> This sights. Super simple. I have come to absolutely love the Trijicon SRO. I think it's hands down the best red dot on the market and I love to run it. This is the 2.5 MOA version. So that's the red dot I have on here. The dot is super bright and upon presentation, the bevels fade away into the sunset. For backup irons, I usually run Ameriglow, but I found these by Seekins Precision and they just have a little bit of extra flair that I thought fit nicely with this. And I was right. They're nice and thin, and with backup irons, I usually like the all black, so the front sight post doesn't become intrusive or a distraction. When presenting the red dot, we're really getting into the weeds here, but that's what I like. These are also high enough where you can co-witness with this SRO if it goes down, but it ain't gonna go down. The P320 is fantastic. SIG has listened to us, I think, and what we want, and now you don't have to spend a ton of money to outfit a pistol the way you want it, or Gucci-fy it to be happy. You can outfit it exactly how you want the first time, and you don't have to buy a stock pistol and go from there. And I think that's a huge step forward for those of us with specific needs. And although this is a great pistol, if you can't use it, it's kind of pointless. So get some training. There are a lot of great shooting schools out there. By far my favorite out here in Idaho is Shaw Shooting and Hagerman. But you have Greyhive Tactical, T-Rex Arms has a ton of content on their website for free training. Dragonfly Haley, Black Iron Gunner in Ohio. Just make sure the quality of your training fits your training level and progress accordingly. Outside of that, modify your pistol as much as you want. That's what I say. And with that, be a good citizen. Respect your neighbor. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.